you saw the boundary pin markers, you saw the elevation stakes, so now you're going to see what that means as it's transcribed into the site plan. This is the site plan here. Uh, I'm going to try to not show you the sensitive information, but that's essentially the site plan. Hopefully it's showing up really good here. But essentially what they do is they take the house and they put it how it would look on the actual land. So you have your pin markers, which is your four corners, which is your boundaries. And that's identified by the black marks that are on the paper here, these dots. And those are the boundary markers. And if you walk your your lot or your home, you probably see markers on the in the ground that are iron pins, or they're probably on the telephone posts, or they're maybe on the road, something like that. That's how you know where your boundaries are, or your four corners of the actual lot. And then from there, they take a setback, which is setbacks are from wherever that pin marker is from the road. Let's just say your setback is where the actual house starts. That's your setback. So every county is different. So they, some counties have a setback of 20 feet from the road, 10 feet, 30 feet, 25 feet. It all depends on which where you're living. And then setbacks from your neighbors. Uh, that's the that's the space between your boundary line and your neighbor's boundary line and then the setback and within and that that setback that space is where you cannot build you have to allow that that buffer room between everything around you so that's that's what this is now the elevation part is really really important too I didn't understand the elevation and how to take elevation so when they do your site plan, there's markers here and it shows you a benchmark of elevation, uh, which is the, and now a benchmark elevation is the point of reference of where you're going to use to get your elevation of the other points of the building. So for example, if you had one point, which is 10 feet, you want to see where uh, on the other three points of your building where your 10 foot is going to be so you can level all those points now you do that because the ground might be like this it might it not it's the ground's not going to be level but when you want your building sitting on the ground you want that finished first floor to be leveled so you take that one point which is the benchmark and then you use a laser that will read that benchmark of that that you set at that that elevation of 10 foot and then you take that you take your your receiver that talking to your laser at the 10 foot level and you go out there to the other three points and you figure out higher or lower where you're going to set your foundation forms which is the molds basically and that's how you determine and, and level off the three other points according to your benchmark and that's important it took me a while to really understand that part so every site plan has this like for this one I'm sure you probably can't read it because the lighting's horrible so the the benchmark elevation is found on the power pole it's a nail and they marked it on one of the telephone poles and they have a little orange ribbon tied to it and it says it right here actually on the site plan hopefully you could see this and it shows really good that's the benchmark elevation found on the power pole and it and this one says the elevation equals 17.91 which is about 18 foot of elevation give or take all right now today, they actually marked out the four corners and then they actually put the elevation stake of where the actual finish floor elevation is going to be. It's the same thing as a benchmark elevation. Finish floor elevation and benchmark elevations is, is almost the same thing because as you're pulling the elevation or transferring the elevation of that benchmark to the other four corners of your building or three corners of the building, if you got one reference point, which is one corner, which is the elevation, right? you're able from there you will determine what your finished floor elevation will be so in that sense once they pour the foundation your first floor is going to be that benchmark or that elevation so for me what that means is that's about a 19 foot elevation because you saw that on the stake now there is a buffer room where you can play with a couple inches here and there to go higher or lower i am doing three stories so i have a total max build height of in this county i think it's 34 feet it's the build height or 35 feet we're around 33 feet the actual total build height which is from the peak of the ridge to the finished floor elevation it's about 33 feet 
Now, you, I can't go any more than that. So I can't, I cannot extend the ceilings higher or, or, or make a garage higher or anything like that or make the ridge line higher because I have to stay within that, that restriction of that actual total build height. So as far as the elevation of the finished floor, I can play, you know, conservatively a couple inches here and there, but I can't say I want to raise my finished floor elevation to 20 foot. And if, and if they set it to 19 foot and it shows on here 18 feet, I can't do my finished floor elevation at 20 foot. If I want to do that, I have to ask the city for permission because it's such a huge difference between what's on the site plan and what I'm actually doing. Uh, that if the city will approve of it, then okay, we go for it. But realistically, they're going to do that based on the other homes. And they do that because you don't want to have a block of homes where one home's super, super high up elevated and everybody else is like on, you know, looking the same. And that's why that they try to keep it within those tolerances of a couple of inches here and there that you can play with. But anything more than a half a foot, a half a foot or a foot, you're going to have to ask for the permission of the city. And that's that. So I wanted to just explain that to you so that you know, understand what these boundary pins are, what the... Uh, boundary surveys are what the elevation the benchmark elevation the stakes every stake when you look at it has a meaning a reference point there's a grade stake there's an elevation stake there's a cutback stake there's a, um, a setback stake a offset stake like there's so many different meanings and it took me a while to really understand that when you just look at the stakes out there and you can google them and see what that means uh, so all of that is to tell whoever is grading the land or setting the foundation or doing irrigation or water drainage of how of how to cultivate the land so that it could be properly uh, ready to be built. I hope that makes sense. And uh, this is part of the build. It's a great learning experience and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world.